When we think of earthworms, the general consensus is that they're good to have in our soil. We use them in farming and agriculture and in our very own gardens. But what if I told you that today's earthworms are not native to North America? They're invasive, and what's more is that they're slowly but surely remaking our forests. And that has caught the attention of climate scientists. We have evidence that we, we probably did have earthworms in North America before the last glacial period. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to have records of this because they're soft-bodied organisms, so they don't preserve very well, but we have some information. So the vast majority of earthworms that we have now in North America seem to have come over from Europe and more recently from Asia as well. Um, so the first records that we have date back to generally the 19th century, but it's likely that they were present here um, many years before that and just hadn't been recorded. And there's still many parts of North America now where you can't actually find earthworms. So this is an active invasion where they're, they're still spreading into previously earthworm-free soils. I know what you're thinking because I thought it too. How can such a small thing have such a big impact? First of all, earthworms have been found in what's considered to be the biggest terrestrial carbon reservoir, our boreal forest. Compared to other types of forests, most of the carbon is found in the soil. And that's just due to low temperatures, long winters, so everything is happening at a slower pace. Decomposition is very slow, and because of that, organic matter accumulation uh, happens over time. So 95% of the carbon that we find in the boreal forests are found in the soils. So most of the carbon is in the soil. Add earthworms, or ecosystem engineers, and the process of breaking down matter is expedited. We can see soil of the boreal forest as a buffer for carbon sequestration. So if we lose that buffer, that means that some of the organic matter that was supposed to be stabilized in the system for a pretty long time is not going to be there, so it's going to be released into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. While the earthworms are literally breaking down the ground's ability to trap carbon, they're also destroying ecosystems for other organisms. All these different levels of biodiversity are, of course, connected. Um, so when the big changes that we look at are changes to the plant community, but that can spill over into effects to interior invertebrates, mammals, birds, and so on. Um, but when we talk about changes to the soil, we're also talking about physical changes, um, where, for example, when we have removal of the organic leaf litter layer that builds up, that is a habitat for a lot of different organisms as well. So if that's depleted, that habitat is lost as well. It's a slow but steady biological invasion. So how can humans, who are arguably the cause of the problem, help to slow the spread of earthworms? When we're talking about more remote areas, one of the major sources of earthworm spread uh, is actually the disposal of fishing bait. So worms are popular with anglers. You take some worms up, you maybe don't use all of them, you dump the, the spares in the woods, and that's a potential new population. So just being aware of not introducing something in a natural system that was not supposed to be there. And that also goes for soil. So if we are moving soil around with plants, we are also potentially um, adding something new in the system, and that could be invasive earthworms, for instance. Invasive earthworms have been found across the continent, and their rapid spread can be blamed on human movement.